did they just professionally film the auditions for this movie <laughs> and yeah. splice them into the opening credits just to make fun of these kids who can't really act? Did they go through an audition process to audition the kids to be in the audition scenes or did they just hold an open audition? That kind of lack of talent cannot be faked. No. no. So yeah. the makers of this movie were basically cruelly recruiting all these untalented kids to laugh at them. I wonder if now some of those kids walking around <laughs> in their 40s are like, yeah, I was in I was in life with Mikey. Wait a minute, they were making fun of me, those fucking <laughs> bastards. <laughs> What are we doing with our lives? Why did I make you do that? Uh, what, apparently what? <laughs> not following any of the instructions. Have we not come out the other side of this more fancy than when we went in? I feel like all my testosterone just got <laughs> drained from my body just watching that. Look, I'm going to need to drive a Humvee and get really into Zack Snyder movies just to recuperate <laughs> from all look, that. Look, you weren't doing it correctly then. You weren't <laughs> brushing your dog in the most intimate fashion possible. We should talk about that scene with Yelena because she demands to know exactly what happened. And he said, look, if I told you exactly what happened, you'd never believe me. Which is fine for the audience because who the fuck hasn't seen Endgame? The audience he, knows he that would Natasha sound sacrificed herself. He would sound like a blathering crazy person yes. and he knows it. So it's, we walked up to the cliff and there was a man with a red skull and he and looked at us a, and said, what if you has to die for you to get the magic rock? <laughs> and I said, I should do it. I did bad things. But your sister, she was like, I should do it because you have a family. And I went, no, I don't. They're all dust right now. I'm allergic to my family <laughs> i jumped and then she jumped and then she i jumped, jumped again, better and then she jumped she again jumped but better. i caught her with a rope Avengers unite, cause we got to hear you say. I could do this all day. so the kid fucking makes a bet with him for the pendant that he can beat him at sports <laughs> nothing more specific than that just sports go sports even though the only sport the kid's been playing at this point was basketball. And he explicitly said he's not good at baseball, too. So yeah. he's already established he's only good at the one. Ain't no rule says a leprechaun can't play basketball. <laughs> you know, I just this moment realized when I said ain't no rule says a leprechaun can't play basketball. This movie is just Teen Wolf. Oh my god, you're right. It's Teen Wolf <laughs> with leprechauns. Kiss me, I'm Irish. I am the wild rover. My eyes, they are smiling. It's always a great sign when I'm watching a new piece of content for this podcast. And the first thing you hear anyone say is, Perry is a prehensile-tailed porcupine. She's been trained to allow us to do ultrasounds on her. I want to hear Rick Flagg say that. Like, this is Perry. <laughs> She's a prehensile-tailed porcupine. I would advise not getting pricked by her. Her quills trap the fetuses of her victims. Honestly, I would watch an entire HBO Max show just about that porcupine. <laughs> she was adorable. She was adorable. <laughs> Porcupines aren't fair. They're the cutest friggin' things, and you can't touch them. No. <laughs> no hugging allowed. The only thing missing was a hat, so you could go... Oh, it's Patty the Porcupine. Patty the Porcupine! Hey, hey, it was blastastic. <laughs> was it, though? It was astromazing. Honestly, take a shot every time they try to make a catchphrase happen in this show. <laughs> On it like a comet. You'll be in space soon enough. I'm a big fan of bad nomenclature. <laughs> That's why I love Universal Studios. <laughs> I used to play bass for bad nomenclature. <laughs> the second segment opens with the main kid, Miles, just saying, Galactic! <laughs> As an exclamation, you're really scrubbing the bottom of the barrel here, folks. Uh -oh, I'm a hero to the core, and I'm going to explore way out.
this first movie feels grounded. It feels yeah. like it takes place in the real world, but there's a weird curse. There's one magic element, which is the curse and what it does to you. But then the next movies literally take place in the world of Greek mythology. Yeah. Oh, you can sail off the edge of the earth. Davy Jones is real. Calypso is real. The Kraken is real. And everyone just accepts all of this. At least the sequels are aware enough to know that the big bad in the entire franchise was capitalism all along. Well, yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll give it that much. <laughs> yo, ho, yo, ho, the pirates fight for me. With gun and with plunder, we rifle and look great. Got to be hard to go I was not expecting to be watching Babarusa pig porn today, but yeah. <laughs> here we are. With the very conveniently placed foliage. Right. Oh, they're showing the moment when he mounts, but at the same time, it's just behind a bush. I was not expecting them to actually show the mounting. The thing that made it was as that was going on, you see kids watching and pointing. Yep, yeah. We really want the children to watch the pigs going at it. <laughs> Come on, kids, let's watch these Babarusas fall! <laughs> <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. Oh, it's perfectly fine and educational for these kids to watch Babarusa pigs get it on in broad daylight, but try telling a third grader that gay people exist right. and Florida flips out. <laughs> Space Voyage is a way better name. Yeah. Just absolutely objectively. It's got a V and a Y in it. It looks better on a poster. I know they kind of go into detail as to why they call it Space Mountain because it's supposed to be the spiritual successor to Matterhorn or something because it's the same ride track. But even then, that doesn't really make too much sense. See, I always kind of liked the fact that the phrase Space Mountain makes no goddamn sense. <laughs> to me, that just kind of adds to the mystique of it. I've thought so many times about when they inevitably make make the Space Mountain movie, how there will be some line of dialogue in there about, oh yeah, the old Space Station 75, but everyone calls it the Space Mountain. That's the colloquial term yeah. in universe because of the shape. Sometimes in life we face a mountain. Chad, you're doing it. And sometimes the mountain's also in space. Antonio is kind of torturing that jaguar by not letting him eat the other animals. <laughs> like, cats are carnivores. I'm yeah. sorry. You know? We don't really get a lot of how that's working out. Yeah, yeah. That, you know? I mean, his room is basically Disney's Animal Kingdom. Oh, mm -hmm. when he. With the, with the tree <laughs> of life his, there. his own rainforest cafe. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> when he got his gift, I thought, oh, hell no. That is the worst gift all day you're going to hear. I want to eat. I want to fuck. I want to eat. I want to <laughs> fuck. Eat, they fuck, eat and fucking eat, fucking, fucking, fucking eat and fuck, eat and fucking fuck, shit. Fuck, eat, and all shit day. And, and eat and shit and fucking and shit and, and eat. eat. And you couldn't turn it off. <laughs> A kid has to learn at some point though. He's yeah. gonna learn about the birds and the bees from the birds and the bees. Yes. You are fucking. Like a trip, trip, trip that'll never stop. Whoa. The play on Rocket Tear. Okay, there are plenty of tears. Was there a rocket? No! Is there any rocket involved with no. that costume? That must have been a really bad translation of a pun that made sense in French. And then dubbing it, they're like, oh shit, we have to think of something in English. Something to do with tears? Rocketeer, sure, why yeah, not? Yeah, in France, a crying spaceship is actually a pretty common saying. Probably. So, yeah. Or it probably didn't have anything to do with spaceships. It mm -hmm. was probably just whatever the French word for tear is and a play on words on that. I guess they thought the tear jerker would be too fetishy. <laughs> I guess, that, yes. That was one fetish <laughs> too far. My tears at you, jerk. Let it bug, let it bug, poke your head out of the rug and come see me and bring your jug. It's when you come see me. These are human interest stories presented in a manner that's meant to inspire rather than wallow in, oh, there's nothing we can do about it. No, here's some people who actually are doing something about it. Maybe not everything, but something at least. It is not nothing. It's definitely not nothing. But you know who did do almost nothing on this show? <laughs> 
Gal Gadot. Gal Gadot. There we go. She shot that in one afternoon. I want guesstimates on how much of her time they actually took. One day. 20 minutes Not tops. even a day. I'm saying 45 minutes in total, including drive time to and from the <laughs> overlook where they shot this. No, I guarantee you, they did not even go to an overlook. They shot this on the balcony of her Hollywood Hills mansion. Oh, you know, <laughs> that's probably true. Imagine there's no heaven. Easy if you try. She is obsessing in this episode over the Necronomica cassette. Which yes, <laughs> I love that. This cartoon about ducks for children did not need to reference Evil Dead, but it went <laughs> there. Yep. To the point where they gave Donald a chainsaw. Gave, yeah. Yeah. Donald, Donald was Duck ash for one a, beautiful it, moment. It was so good. By the way, when the zombies start rising from the dead, you realize... Wait, so there were bodies buried in the backyard of McDuck yeah. Manor? I mean, what wealthy capitalist hasn't built their home on the graves of poor people? Well, usually it's more metaphorical than that. <laughs> This film is the perfect allegory for what it's like as a young person navigating the internet for the first time. <laughs> yeah, very much so. Please elaborate. Yes, so Tweedledee and Tweedledum are like clickbait articles. Mm. You won't believe what happened to these oysters. <laughs> the tea party. Oh, yes. That almost felt like internet gatekeeping. Oh, what a nice big table there is. There's lots of open seats here. It's like no, no, room, room, no, no room, no room, no room, no room. Towards the end, you get the Red Queen and the futility of even engaging in political discourse. Oh, yes. You try to. <laughs> and of course, the Cheshire Cat is a troll. Yeah. Yeah. That's who he is. Exactly. A very petty and birthday. To me? To you. A very petty and birthday. To me? For you. So the rules of the love potion are you sprinkle this pink dust in some one's eyes and when they open their eyes the first person they see they fall in love with mm -hmm. the first creature she sees is the bog king there was kind of a drunkness to that love potion just the way she was like oh my bloggy woggy kingy wingy this is just a drunk girl at the bar yeah. at like 2 a.m <laughs> look marianne marianne <gasps> I can fix him. <laughs> I can fix him for you. You can fix him like a veterinarian. Snip, snip, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> I can't help falling in love with you. So crazy, crazy in love. They mentioned the game Subhumanoid Slaughterhouse 5000. <laughs> I feel like at least 80% of the kids who played Subhumanoid Slaughterhouse 5000 grew up to join the alt-right. God, right? You just know all the fans of that now call everyone online they disagree with politically subhumanoids. <laughs> and here's yeah. the part that throws me. They establish in that scene that there's another one called Subhuman Slaughterhouse 2000, but 5000 That's not as way, good. <laughs> that's not as good, yeah. Are there actually 5,000 games in this fictional <laughs> franchise? I mean, Aeneas Sarkeesian covered 3,000 in the Tropes of Women series and everyone got really pissed off Man. about that. Subhumanoid <laughs> Slaughterhouse 3,182 was just amazing. Yeah, but then unfortunately, <laughs> Subhuman Slaughterhouse 4,238 really jumped the shark. <laughs> Shave the tiger? <laughs> I don't know. Did you notice? They did not explain that at all. You just Why see them shaving some of the tiger's fur. I feel like more than half of the procedure that they got to do for these animals, there's no reason to them. <laughs> I feel like there must be. I mean, look, I'm not a veterinarian. What the hell do I know about caring for animals? Nothing. But so much of the shit they were doing to this tiger just seemed like, well, how many other opportunities are we going to get to fuck with a tiger <laughs> while he's under anesthesia? Let's put a tube down his throat. Let's <laughs> shave him. Let's shove a duck up his ass. Let's do all this shit. Tony, when you mention, I'm not a veterinarian, but I just realized this podcast is to animals what Joe Rogan is to vaccines. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. I can buy the tail. It's plain to see. I won't be much when you get through with me. Which of the writers was holding on to that icicle built for two line, <laughs> waiting all season to figure out how to make it work? <laughs> oh, probably the very same writer who wrote the indelible line, hold on to your ice cubes, old buddy. Hold on to your ice cubes. <laughs> 
I have to wonder if that was the writers just going, let's see if we can sneak let's this past the Let's see if BSNP the notices this one. And they didn't. So <laughs> his testicles. Dracula is renting his house from Dr. Weird. That's great. <laughs> Gentlemen, behold! Testicles! <laughs> and if I see Van Helsing, I swear to the Lord I will slay him. Ah, 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 he'd take you from me, but I swear I won't let it be so. Now then, time for me to get nitpicky about this film. <laughs> I'll go get the hitting bat. They never explain why the sea monsters turn into humans on dry land. Lewis, I know where you live. Well, sea monsters in real life don't exist anyway, so that can be explained as just part of the magic of sea monsters. Is it magic? Ding. Fins are not mustaches, ding. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they wear clothes underwater? Ding! Cause I knew that I'm a gay fish, gay fish, gay fish, yo. Motherfucking gay fish, gay fish. I'm a fish, yo. Going on a gay fish. This is the second year in a row on Patreon Request Month when we've gotten something Rescue Rangers related. Because last really? year, we got the episode where Gadget builds a spaceship. Oh, wow. Aww. Now we get the episode where Gadget fucks a bug. <laughs> I wrote down in my notes, was that some sexual tension? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. I feel like that was a deliberate fuck you to the shippers. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There were shippers? Oh, yeah. Gadget has been relentlessly fetishized over the years. Go to DeviantArt if you don't believe me. Yeah, just turn off Safe Search and look up <laughs> Gadget, Monterey Jack, and have an adventure. I don't think anyone ever shipped Gadget with Zipper. And if I'm incorrect, I do not want to be proven wrong. Hey, if you have evidence that proves to the contrary, don't tweet it at any of us. We will block you. Because <laughs> he's chill. He's and will never fail. Because neither of us will ever eat braille. No, never, ever, never, ever, never, never eat braille. The Phantom of the Megaplex is something that he does not believe in. However... The werewolf the of the werewolf Megaplex of is the another Megaplex. story. I smell sequel. Yeah, that sequel never happened. Thank God. Yeah, and they close the door and you hear, oh. That always scared me as a kid. This was the original plan for Dark Universe, is they were going to do <laughs> Phantom of the Megaplex, Werewolf of the Megaplex. Frankenstein of the Megaplex. Eventually Loch Ness Monster of the Megaplex. Dracula Untold of the Megaplex. Megalodon of the Megaplex. That would have been interesting. <laughs> You're from the Megaplex. You're from the Megaplex. We're all from the Megaplex. Yes, Mr. Sherman. Everything's from the Megaplex. Hooray for Hollywood. You may be only in your neighborhood. But if you think that you can be an actor. This is also a really fun show about how kids are crazy people. They're insane. <laughs> before life destroys their whimsy. Mm -hmm. like yeah. They wake up their dad by pretending his feet are their pets. Wake up their dad's feet. I'm trying so hard not to mention that one Nickelodeon person. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Ugh. Well, you did. I tried to leave out the name. <laughs> I do feel like that is how a fetish gets started. It sure is. Bluey and Bingo are talking about how their dad's feet are their pets. So these dogs <laughs> understand the concept of a pet, uh -oh. even though they don't have any pets. <laughs> In a world run by anthropomorphic dogs, what would they keep as pets? Tiny people? Maybe there's other episodes that flesh it out. I want to see the tiny people that they've <laughs> enslaved. Well, I had an old dog and his name was Blue. Yes, I had an old dog and his name was Blue. Their true form is this race of floating gaseous space bubbles, and somehow they evolved the ability to build cities? And spaceships. Bubbles don't have opposable <laughs> thumbs! I could feel my brain cells popping like Ariel's mother most of the <laughs> oh way through. God. I want all Disney parents to die like that from now on. I want all <laughs> Disney parents to just pop. Pop, yes. I think that's how Jasmine's mom died. Ariel wishes she was still a 2000s era CGI pink bubble of gas at her home planet with her boyfriend, whose father is an evil emperor who, in a way more literal than the mind can easily conceive, popped her mom. Right. <laughs> Why is anything anything? Yes. <laughs> I will pop your mom. <laughs> that sounds like the worst fucking euphemism, I and know. I don't even know <laughs> what for. I don't remember in any of the other Star Wars things the notion of Having the high ground being important, that's why it became a meme, because it's kind of a stupid moment. Let's have this intense battle that lasts 15 minutes over lava and there's things that are falling. We're fighting all this stuff and then we get to the shore. Oh, look, I'm like 
six feet elevated up a slope. <laughs> now I'm the winner for I have the high ground. It's like, really? Well, I mean, technically he's not wrong because that is how he defeats Anakin. Anakin tries to gain the high ground by jumping over him and Obi-Wan just slices the fucker. Some storyboarder worked and worked and worked <laughs> for weeks and then it got to the deadline and they just drew like two stick figures and like a... Diagonal how do we line. end there, this? It's done. it's done. Yeah, how he do did. we end this fight? And they just did the fastest thing they could think of. He did the storyboard equivalent of typing "they fight." So glad that I know more than I knew that gonna keep on trying till I reach my highest ground. So they're pulling this fucking scam where they're pretending that she's married to him and that Miley's brother is her fucking son and who fucking cares? Can I just say, I was getting Boba Fett, Django Fett vibes from Big Billy Ray and Little Billy Ray. Just, <laughs> <laughs> I am not convinced there was a mother involved in the myosis <laughs> of that cell. That is Billy Ray and that is a smaller Billy Ray. They are twins, but they are somehow also father and son. If the stormtroopers invade and they all look like Billy Ray Cyrus, I called it. This is the way, y'all. You get the best of both worlds. Chill it out, take it slow. Then you rock out the show. You get the best. Should we talk about the choices of music used in this movie? Because <laughs> no, they were all wrong. I refuse. Every last Honestly, music choice in this movie was wrong. I refute your assertment that there were choices. There was just a dartboard that they were <laughs> throwing. I think there was an out. algorithm. I admired their restraint for not using who let the dogs out. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, was I was expecting shocked. it. But they Kept did use Too Sexy, drop. and I just don't I feel they, comfortable they with that. They used Too Sexy. They used Whoop There It Is. Yeah. They used fucking Hero by Enrique Iglesias. <laughs> what the fuck? What song would you expect for the arriving in Mexico montage? You'd probably expect something Mexican, right? Nope. They play Hot, Hot, Hot by Buster Poindexter, who was born in New York City. New York, New York City. City. <laughs> Get a rope. guy, the janitor, whatever he was. Oh, the caretaker. Best character. The budget Don Knotts. <laughs> that was my least favorite part. Anytime he was on screen, I was just like, he was horrible. This guy is the worst. The oh caretaker God. who does nothing but fucking see the ghosts moving shit around and then just fucking mugs and runs out of the room like, oh no, it's g -g -g ghost uh, blah, 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 and runs away. Even the scene where the main kid is talking to the ghost. Nothing's even <laughs> yeah. moving around or floating through the air. And he still runs away like, oh my God, that kid has an imaginary friend. Run! So bad. We're so all bad. doomed. You're so kind. I know you would not mind. Send the way goes to the home. Amy has two dads. Yes. And she's wearing a rainbow pin. And also in another scene, she has like a patch on her vest that says she slash her. It's cute. I appreciate all that. Would have been even nicer if we'd actually like seen her gay parents. That would have been nice. Yeah. Enjoy another breadcrumb, LGBTQ plus community. Disney loves doing that. Enjoy your breadcrumbs. Hey, next month Eternals comes out and that'll be a whole crouton for you. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. These gay parents didn't cause Hiroshima. <laughs> The sequel is apparently about the wedding of Amy's parents. Oh, okay. Oh, see? They're going to flesh it out. All right. All right. I respect that. Do we get to see more of the mummy girlfriend with her fabulous eye makeup that has stayed immaculate throughout the centuries? <laughs> well, you have to know she's a girl mummy somehow. Yeah, the mummies can't be gay. What are you, crazy? It's just me and my mummy. My mummy and me. My lovers. How fucking dare they have a bully character and put him in a fucking Beastie Boys t-shirt? How dare they? <laughs> I think that Adam Yauk would not have signed off on that. I Adam Yauk would never. When we found out that the bully character is another closeted Broadway fan, he comes out in a Genesis shirt. Because, you know, everyone had their two CDs, the Genesis CD and the Beastie Boys CD. Everyone right. listened to both of those albums equally. It was and the same fan and, base. And then they went and punched a nerd. Yes. <laughs> Just as I thought it was going all right, find out I'm wrong when I thought it was right. <laughs> like, it's always the same. 
shame. It's just a shame. That's all. That is not what the Beastie Boys stood for. So what you what you what you want? But they did wrong. I know they are. Cause I can play this guitar. Flipping the shark over is like the sleep button. You can still get water through its gills so it will still breathe. But it's high as hell. Flipping over the shark they after couldn't get- having it be in night night land. I wonder if sharks talk about researchers the way we talk about alien abductions. <laughs> Oh, it's that like, would be fascinating. Man, I got pulled by something on my suit, and then they flipped me over, and I was all in a trance. <laughs> and they gave me a piercing and probed me, and yeah, then whatever, they let Jeffrey. me go. I uh, don't mind him. That's just Frank. He thinks he was abducted <laughs> by scientists. By the awkward seals that don't taste good. Who is the fish that will put you on his grocery list? Shark. Who is the fish that won't come out? The sugar glider was the size of the palm of my hand. Yeah. It was a little Jim Henson looking critter. I would venture even smaller than that. Just because I'm a sick fuck in all the shots where the vet's holding the little sugar glider in her hand, I kept waiting for her to pop it in her mouth. I've had Twinkies bigger than that sugar glider. (laughs) The way that my expression of how cute something is is I squeeze Mm. and I was just like... (laughs) Do like a John Goodman with the frog, you know, Brother Where Art Thou, where she just squeezes it so tight she kills it oh man Uh again i'm a sick fuck Uh, i do not represent the views of my guests i was waiting for the whole time you're so cute scrap oh no just throw it in the pile we lost another one you got your dead skunk in the middle of the road dead skunk in the middle of the road this movie has both pre-9-11 airport security and yep, the pre-9-11 yep. New York skyline. Yep, Macaulay, yep. get off of those towers. <laughs> has anyone cut that together? Like the sweeping <laughs> helicopter shot showing Macaulay Culkin as the only tourist at the top of yeah. the World Trade Center. And you hear that sax solo. And then the second plane. <laughs> <laughs> So That's bad. terrible. Oh, I'm Jesus sorry. Tony. That would be the ultimate Home Alone prank right there. No. Turns out Harry and Marv are the hijackers. <laughs> They're getting back at them. Oh, no, not again. We're going to get us 72 virgins, Marv. Oh, my okay, God. Harry. Tony. The way Michael Caine plays the graveyard scene and the way the whole scene is shot and directed he asks who those people were talking about but the way Kane plays it you can tell he already goddamn knows exactly whose name is on that fucking tombstone he doesn't even need to scrape it off and the whole time he's kind of in denial about it Flebenezer Spoon <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I'm all good. Thank God. That was a close call. They spelled it wrong? What the fuck? It's not Flebenezer Spooge. It's Star-Lord. <laughs> it's in the singing of a street corner choir. It's going home and getting warm by the fire. It's true wherever you find love. 